Hi, I'm Denise from Foursquare Micro Farm, and I'm going to introduce you a little bit to uh, spinning with the drop spindle. Now, a lot of times I find that spinning yarn um, is a, or teaching it is a lot like teaching a philosophy, because I'm pretty sure you've heard people say, well, there's really no right or wrong way uh, to spin. And that's, that's kind of true. Um, a lot of it depends on what your goals are as far as spinning is concerned. So there, there aren't really a lot of right ways to do things. There are some definite wrong ways, but most of it um, is a matter of what's easier and what's harder. So you could do it a certain way, but it would be harder or it'd be easier to do it if you did it like this way. And basically that's what I want to try to explain is um, ways to do it that are easier that I've learned based on my experience with spinning. It's one of those, I wish somebody had told me kind of thing. So I'm here trying to kind of pass this on to you to give you a bit of a jump start so you don't have to kind of figure these things out by trial and error. Though there are still plenty of things you'll have to figure out by trial and error based on what you want out of spinning. Okay, they always say, most people say that you should start learning how to spin using the drop spindle. And personally, I hated the drop spindle. And if it was for the drop spindle, I probably wouldn't be a spinner. But um, I learned primarily through the wheel. And once I learned on the wheel, I was able to translate what I had learned onto the spindle. And so the spindle has become my friend. So if you're having a really hard time learning on the spindle, um, don't worry so much. Maybe you can find a will, try a will, see if it works that way for you. So don't just give up just because the spindle is not your happy place. So at any rate, this is my go-to spindle. Uh, it's not the only spindle that I own, but it's the one I like the most. And I just made this spindle uh, from a correct will and a dowel rod. And it handles pretty much all of my spindle spinning needs. Uh, I This is a... a bottom whirl spindle is what it's called. I also have a top whirl spindle where the hook is here. I have some Russian spindles that do not have hooks and they are made to be balanced inside uh, a cup or some other type of surface. I have a Turkish spindle. So there's different spindles for different fibers and different methods of spinning. But I found by trial and error that what I prefer is a bottom whirl spindle with a hook. The biggest differences for me is that it seemed to me that the top whirl spindles, they seem to wobble for me as I'm spinning, even though they tend to spin faster for me than the bottom whirls do. The bottom whirls spin a little slower and also the balance on them towards the bottom is something that I favor. They don't seem to wobble quite as much uh, and uh, they seem to load better for me. That's just a preference that I had. So you can try both top whirl and bottom whirl and see which one you prefer. They may be different. The Russian spindles and the Turkish spindles, that'll have to be for another day. Okay, this spindle weighs about 1.3 ounces and I spin primarily Angora on it. As you can see, there's still Angora on it. Some people tell you that you need a lighter spindle for Angora, and that kind of depends, okay? I find that for me, the lighter spindles don't spin as fast as I would like them to, and so this seems to be just the perfect weight. It's also a weight that I can spin wool on, and I've spun some maybe worsted weight. It's probably the heaviest I've spun on this, and this right here is pretty thin, uh, this was definitely going to be a lace weight, at the most a fingering weight here. So I can get a, a, quite a range on this spindle. So it just kind of depends. Um, you don't want to start with something too heavy um, as a beginner or something too light. So just something mid-range, no more than two ounces tops. Maybe the heaviest spindle I own is six ounces worth of spindle. And it is my large plying spindle for both yarns. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is tie on to the spindle. So I made a knot right here. And this leader, this is called a leader, 
this is my hand spun mohair. You don't necessarily need a leader, but for the sake of being a new um, spindler or a new spinner, I don't want you to have to make your own leader, but you could. You could just hook the fiber supply onto the hook here and spin and get yourself a leader. Okay, now, I like to tie mine from the top and then run it under the bottom, bring it back up to the side, run it around, and just kind of thread it through one of the sides. That's just my preference there. And then I've got it on the hair nicely. And I am going to spin my single in a clockwise, which is an S twist. And so I'm going to wrap this around the hook clockwise. Now, there are people who say that the S twist is better for knitting and the Z twist is better for crocheting. That may or may not be too true. Here's the thing. When you go into a store and you buy commercial yarn, Nowhere does it say this is a S-twist yarn for crochet or for knitting, and this is a Z-twist yarn for crochet. There's just an industry standard of how this yarn is you spun. So in my view, it doesn't really make a difference what direction you spin it in, as long as you're spinning it one way for the single and a different way for the fly. So I just stick with the industry standard the S twist for the single and the Z twist for my fly. And I knit, crochet, weave, whatever with my uh, hand spun yarn. So, you know, that's one of those matters of philosophy. Okay, so now see, I have my leader ready. Next, uh, this is mohair, of course, and it's very grippy. So I could just lay my fiber onto the mohair and turn uh, but I like to tie a knot so I pull a little bit of the fiber out and I just go ahead and tie a knot that's the way I like to do it okay and so now it's ready to spin okay the first thing you're gonna need to master is flicking with your thumb and your what is that the middle finger Okay, so the thumb and the middle finger, you probably could do it with your thumb and index finger too, but I did a better flick with my thumb and middle finger. And you might just want to practice flicking for a while, knowing where to flick on the dowel in order to get a nice consistent spin. And you can just hold that leader in your hand while you do a little flicking. So once you think you've got that flicking down pat, here's where the real spinning starts. Okay, so... You have where you tied your knot at or where you leashed on at. You're going to pinch that right here. And this is your fiber supply. And you're going to do what's called drafting. What you want to do is pull the fiber out. And you need as much of a thickness as a width between the two fingers as the thickness of the yarn you want to make. Okay, I'm going to stop you there and give you a little more philosophy. This is called the drafting zone. And however the thickness of fibers that you have in between these two fingers is going to determine the thickness of your yarn. Okay, so I'm going to flick and spin so I can show you this. Okay, now you can see the thickness of my yarn. You'll hear people say that when you spun so long, you start spinning thin and you can't go black back to thick like you were as a beginner. And so you have to do a bunch of plies and you're back to, to thick spinning. So they say, oh, enjoy being a beginner because you'll never spin that thick again, which is so untrue. What determines how thick your fiber is, is what you put inside this space. So if you want a thicker yarn, you simply increase the thickness of the stuff you have in the space. Just make it thicker. Okay, so when you are a beginner, and that's some beginners, because some beginners kind of have this skill. Um, when you are a beginner, what you're looking at is how much 
of this fiber I pulled out and how thick it is from here to here. And when I'm pulling that, if I'm pulling a consistent amount each time, then I'm going to spin a consistent yarn. That is how you get your yarn singles consistent, okay? And it takes muscle memory. So I can tell you how to do it, but you, you have to practice this in order to get, you see my yarn here, in order to get something consistent. Okay, I'm gonna wind on this cop because I'm running out of room. And that would be number three. Winding the cop is very important. And what the cop is, is this, this buildup, the fiber that you have on your spindle. Winding the cop is important because it changes the center of gravity of your spindle and also it adds weight to your spindle so it will determine if your spindle is bouncing around a lot when you're spinning you don't want that extra wobble and also it will determine the speed of your spindle or how many times you have to keep flicking it in order to achieve what you want so and also how much fiber you can load on the spindle too so to get this as compact as I possibly can so that the spindle will spin cleanly and that the weight will stay down on the bottom where it needs to be. First of all, I give it a few spins and I'm spinning, I'm winding on, I should call it counterclockwise, around the bottom. And then I'm going to spiral it towards the top. And how and when I start to spiral um, is determined by um, how much extra I want to leave above the hook so that I can grab that here. So I don't want it to be too short so it's really close. I need to give it enough space. And then I just wrap it once, twice, clockwise around the hook. Okay, so here I am again. Here's our three skills that we're working on. First of all, we're working on getting a consistent flick. Then uh, in your case, do what they call the park and draft method, where you stop the spindle, keep your finger here, because if you don't, the twist will travel up into the fiber supply up here and you'll just get a, a knotted nest that you have to kind of untangle. So you, I'm just going to transfer that pinch here. Then number two, I'm going to draft the thickness that I want. And like I said, don't be obsessive if you don't get a consistent thickness um, the first couple times because it's a muscle memory. It's a hand and eye coordination. Um, it's an eye memory for exactly how, how much you need to pull it out. It's also determined by the staple length of your fiber. You can only pull it out as far as the length of each individual fiber is. So pull that out till it is where you want. Pinch that again at the end. Let the twist go up. Okay. Uh, where are we? I think we're at number four. Number four. You're also learning how to determine if a fiber has enough twist. Okay. I talked about that in the Angora spinning group, and I think I'll transfer that information into the spin by design group. But uh, I'm always asked, how do I keep my spindle from dropping? It just keeps dropping. It just keeps dropping. It's dropping for a couple of different reasons. First of all, your spindle is heavy compared to the weight of your fiber. Okay. But that can be overcome. Like I said, I spin Angora, thin Angora on this same spindle. So uh, secondly, you're dropping because you're pulling the fiber past its um, staple length. And so it can't hold tight. So you don't want to do that. Third is dropping because you have not put enough twist in the yarn. So you know your yarn is, or your single is ready because it's not dropping the spindle. Okay. If you have too much twist, it'll be, it'll kink up all like that. And then you'll know you've got too much twist. Here's a way to fix that. First of all, if you have not enough twist and it's falling, lay the pieces back over top of each other. It's just really it's just pinch right here. Lay it in the drafting zone, pinch, and let the twist travel up or twist it some more in there if you need to. That will fix that. That's also how you add more fiber. Or if you have too much twist, you just simply pinch in the drafting zone, draft out, let the twist travel up until it looks like this. Okay, that is enough, I think, for the first lesson.
Okay, so I'm going to go for a slow recap because a good teacher knows when they've given out too, informa too much information. And basically, uh, from this point on, it's just a matter of you practicing uh, those particular steps and just sticking with those steps. Don't want you to get too fancy or worry about too much anything else. Okay, first thing I did was I tied on my leader. Okay, I tied it from the bottom, I wrapped it around. And then I did a clockwise spin around this guy and hooked it on here. Okay, so I'm spinning clockwise for my singles. I tied on to my leader with the fiber that I'm using. Okay. I gave the a little bit of twist into it. Then I pinched it at the bottom to twist. I pulled out a length that was good for the staple length of my fiber with enough of a thickness inside the drafting zone to get the thickness of single that I wanted. Okay. Remember, don't try to start out real thin. Just do what you're comfortable with as far as what's inside this drafting zone. Okay. Then I'm at the top here where my fiber supply is. I pinch that off. I twist my spindle. Then I stop that spindle. I park it. If I have to park it to my legs, park it under my arm. If I can just park it with my hands, I reach up to where I stopped that twist that, I pull out more fiber in my drafting zone. I stop a hair right here where my fiber supply is. Then I let that twist travel up and I twist some more. And I'm being mindful about what's happening in this space to see if it's kinking up and over twisting. If it's under twisting and it falls off, I need to grab at the place where it's falling off at, lay the fiber back over top of it, and twist some more until it's where it needs to be. If I'm finding that it's kinking up too much, I pause it and I straighten it out. Okay, everybody, just practice those for a while. If you have any questions or comments, um, you can leave those in the comment section. I will answer those. If you have any specific questions, in the next video, I will address those questions for you. And if you're spinning with a wheel instead of a spindle, please let me know. I have three different wheels, a Scotch tension, Irish tension, and a double drive wheel. And each of those are a little different as far as the setup and how the machine will pull on you when you're drafting. So I can also put in a segment about how to start this with the wheel and how to handle the wheel. As always, uh, you can join me over on Facebook in the Spin by Design group. I've done a little absent there, but I'm going to go ahead and put this video inside that group. Also, you can join me on Facebook. And yes, that Facebook Force Micro Farm page is still there. So you can contact me through that way. Practice, practice, practice in the meantime. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.